This is the most popular cut of beef in American barbecue. If you guessed brisket, you got it right. And this one specifically is not that great. We're talking about select. Now we're gonna be doing something unthinkable today. I'll be cooking this brisket for a week. Will it be as tender as it gets? Is it gonna be an incredible brisket? Well, we're about to find out right now. Because the first thing to do is to trim it. For that, I like to start off in the edges. Once I was done with both edges, then I flip it to the other side. This hung chunk of fat right here has to go. Once that was done, I continued to trim a little bit because once I was done with all of my trimming, this is what it looks like. I have a nice aerodynamic brisket. I left about a quarter inch of fat on the lean and on the fatty and it is now ready to be seasoned. For that, I kept it real simple. A good amount of salt followed by freshly ground black pepper. Notice that I'm not using any type of binder. That's because my seasoning here will stick without any issue. As you can see, once I was done, it was heavily seasoned because the next thing to do is to get a nice good amount of smoke on it. For that, I went outside and opened up my Camp Chef smoker. Threw it in there and let it smoke for six hours at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. You see, my goal is to get a nice smoky flavor on it because once I was done, this is what it looks like. We have a nice beautiful golden brown color on the fat and the meat itself has a nice mahogany which is exactly what I'm looking for whenever I'm smoking brisket. But now the next step is far away from being traditional. First I transferred it to a nice container because the next thing to do is to dunk a humongous amount of Wagyu beef tallow right on top. I am talking about a ridiculous amount and hopefully it's gonna make this brisket taste incredible because once I was done the next thing to do is to cover it up. So I went ahead and clinch plastic the whole thing. The next thing to do was to put it in my oven which was at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Now it will stay there for a whole week and then we're gonna find out what happens. And that was perfect because it allows me a good amount of time to make an incredible side dish for us today. And this one is quite special. However, it is also inexpensive and ridiculously easy to make and here's how. The first thing to do is to cook up some ground beef. I just put it in the pan and break that all up. Then I added some white onions followed by garlic paste, a little bit of salt and pepper and mixed it well. Then I added some tomato paste followed by carrots. Mix everything together and cook it for an additional one minute, as then it was time to deglaze the pan. For that, I used red wine. Doing this will create an incredible flavorful ground beef. Talking about that, another thing that makes it really, really good is to add some peppers. So I first went with jalapeno, followed by scotched bonnet, red bell peppers, a good amount of lime juice, and of course, some Worcestershire sauce. Combine these ingredients and cook it for an additional minute, as once you have done so, the filling is complete. And even though the carrots are still a little bit crunchy, by the end, it will be extremely soft. And that's because we're going to be dredging it in a very cheesy sauce. And to make it, it's even easier and here's how. Into a pan, I added a good amount of butter. Once it was fully melted, I added some all-purpose flour. You want to cook this up for at least three minutes. Once it starts smelling like pie dough, add in some cold milk. Now bring up the heat to height and whisk it really good. As it's heating up, the sauce will start thickening up on you real quick. Once it has done so, add in some nutmeg followed by cheddar cheese. If you grate your own cheese like me, as you're mixing it, it will melt on you real quick. As now, the only thing left to do is to add a little bit of salt, followed by freshly ground black pepper, mix it once again, because our cheesy sauce is done. The next thing to do is to dunk it out on our ground beef. Once that's done, go ahead and add some tater tops right on the top. These are the frozen ones that you can find it anywhere. The only thing left to do now is to put it in the oven. After about 15 minutes at 400 degrees Fahrenheit, this is what I was left with. You see, my taters are now halfway cooked, so I went ahead and added some mozzarella cheese right on top. Back into the oven it went to finish cooking. And in the end, I was left with some nice golden brown crust just like this. To finish it off for some presentation, I just added a little bit of parsley. Not only will it please any adult, but also kids. You can only imagine how wonderful and great this tastes. Well, you're gonna be finding out real soon, because by this time, my one-week brisket was fully done. And the first thing I needed to do was remove the clinch plastic. As I've done so, I was expecting something to smell very strong or bad. But surprisingly, when I remove the lid, take a look. I mean, it looks pretty good. I gotta be honest, holding it on my hand, it's almost falling apart. Setting it down on a cooling rack has to be extremely careful. I let it stay there so that it can drain some of that Wagyu fat, because then I transferred her to a cutting board for a closer look. And I mean, we still have this beautiful mahogany collar. This looks promising, friends. And at the same time, I cannot wait to find out how it's gonna look inside. So for that, I went ahead and started to slice. And as I take off the lean part, take a look. 
This thing is juicy. As I take additional slices, oh man. It's so tender that the fibers are literally separating on its own. But like I always say, the important thing is the taste. And if I hold it up like this and then do the bend test, look at that. It does not break apart on me. What about the lean part? Let's take a slice and look. That is incredible. Extremely juicy. And I was able to get some legitimate slice out of this thing. But the big question is, how does it taste? Well, let's find out right now. All right, everybody. Here we got our beautiful brisket. <laughs> What is that? It's beautiful. No, I, I was just... It looks like a boiled brisket, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> now, here is the deal. I'm gonna give a few warnings, everybody. Please do not try this one at home, okay? What is that, Leo? <sighs> Every time you put a disclaimer at the beginning of an ending, there's nothing but fear and worry that flow through my body. <laughs> Here's what I will say. Please do not try this at home. Guys, if oh. you don't wanna eat it, you don't have to. You don't have to eat this. There is a very small chance of you not going home and going straight six foot under. I'm out. <laughs> I'm gone. <laughs> Are you sick? Yes, <laughs> of course. I don't know what to expect. I can't wait to see that on my obituary. De <laughs> death by brisket. I want to be very clear. You don't have to try this. I don't have to try this, but I'm going to do it anyway. Are you going to do it? Yeah, man, I'll do it, man. Can we at least start on the side dish? <laughs> Please. Yeah, please. Yeah. Let's start with the side dish. Yes, that's a great idea. All right, Leo. Oh, I'm going to give you a very uh, generous amount because you might deserve it today. <laughs> you know what I mean, everybody. <laughs> okay, let's give this a go. Notice how big I'm going for this, yeah. and you will watch how little the brisket will be. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing the same thing. This looks really good, and uh, I'm going to want to remember this taste. We'll find out right now. You guys ready? Enough talking. Let's give this a go. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. Oh, come on. That is so good. <laughs> Enjoy that wonderful taste right now. I'm so mad. And it's, it's literally just because I know that this is going to be the best thing today. <laughs> we don't know. It's kind of like a, like a shepherd's pie almost. Kind of. Yeah, very yeah. similar. Uh, so it has similar ingredients, but at the same time, the top is nice and crispy because of the taters. Underneath on the bottom, it's very delicious, flavorful, flavorful ground beef. And that sauce that I put, that bechamel together with some cheese, delicious, everybody. Highly recommend giving this a try. Yeah, I'm taking your job. Really good. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Google the description guy. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, your side dish game has been incredible. Thank you. Every side dish you're pumping out right now is top notch. Yeah, thank you, think, thank you. Angel, look, I think we should just, just keep talking as much as we can no, about the side I'm, dish. No. Hey, what'd you do last weekend? Bro? Enough <laughs> talking. Let's give this a go. Here's what the most curious thing for me. The fatty has some green fat. It's kind of uh. weird, everybody. But uh, yeah, Angel, please, which one would you like first? Lean. Yeah, okay, I'm going for that one too, Leo. <sighs> Let's do the lean. <laughs> as, as far away from green fat as I can possibly get. Ooh. I got it. Oh, God. It is extremely tender, just in case you were wondering, everybody. Very, very tender. Can't even pick it up. Come on, man. <laughs> I'm going. Enough talking. Let's give this a go and give you guys a true, honest opinion. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs> Cheers, everybody. Cheers. It's not bad. It is not bad. We're not going to die. Yay! <laughs> How do you know? Oh. I guess we'll find out. Well, well, yeah, if I'm still making videos, you guys will know. <laughs> <laughs> One thing that surprises me is that even though it's glistening so much, it wasn't really super juicy when I bit into it. As soon as the fibers come apart, it feels kind of dry as you're chewing it. It almost kind of breaks apart like tuna. You yeah. know, that's a good description. Yeah, like a like cooked tuna. tuna. Almost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's flaky and it's really weird and it's just not what you expect when you take a bite out of brisket. Guys, it's dry as f and surprisingly, it's missing flavor, missing salt, missing yeah. pepper. Yep. Yep. Even though I put a ridiculous amount of salt on this, and I also smoked it. You see how it has a nice smoke I ring? Do, but I don't taste smoke. You don't yeah. taste any smoke no, no. whatsoever. That is completely gone, everybody. It did not get rotten like I did it when we was sous vide. Because it was in fat, the fat preserved it. It is less flavorful, but it is a edible brisket. Is it the best brisket we ever had? Hell no, no, far away from that. Very. But those are the results, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something new. If you did, hit that thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to subscribe for future videos. Remember, if you are interested in anything I use, everything is always in the description down below. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys on the next one. Take care, everybody. If this is my last video, you know the reason why.